What's up friends, Dan Vega here, and today we're gonna to be talking about templates in JTE. Now, what is JTE? I just did a video on this, so if you wanna head over to danvega.dev, head over to the blog, or you can do a search for this, and I have a blog post that includes the video that we just did on the Java template engine. This is a template engine that's been around for a little while, but it was just added to the Spring Initializer. So I did a bit of an introduction to this, and you guys loved it. Thank you so much for all the views. Woohoo! Um, so yeah, I got a lot of good feedback from that video. A lot of questions came out of that. That was just an introduction. Can't do everything at once. So uh, I want to start to tackle some of the questions I got from that. One of which was, this is great, but I'm used to using Timeleaf and I use fragments and layouts and how can I do that in JTE? So that is what we are going to cover today. We're gonna to be talking about how to use templates in our application. So the first thing I would suggest is heading over to jte.gg. Uh, from there, you'll get the documentation for Java template engine. You can go down into the section uh, for rendering a template. And if you go down into, sorry, the template syntax and go over to content, this is where you'll find some information. Now there is a special parameter type to pass template code to other templates, much like lambdas in Java. They're handy for sharing uh, structures between different templates. As you see, you can import this uh, content object and then go ahead and use this. Say, this is where I want the content to be. So you can think of this as our main overall layout, and then every time we switch a page, I may want to put a template for a particular page into that slot. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna create a simple app and walk through how to do this together. So I'm gonna go over to start.spring.io. I'm gonna create a new app. Uh, this will be dev.danvega, and we will call this templates. Uh, we'll use Java 23, you can use whatever you're using at the moment, and we'll add a couple dependencies. So we're gonna create a web app. I also wanna go ahead and choose the JTE template engine. With that, that's all we need. I can go ahead and click generate. We can download this new app. It'll download a zip for us. You can open it up in whatever IDE you're most productive in. I'm gonna open it up in IntelliJ Ultimate Edition. And with that, let's write some code. All right, so I have my application open up. First thing, we're gonna go into the JTE folder, the directory. This is where all of our templates are stored. Uh, IntelliJ gives me this hint to go ahead and drop in a JTE root file that just kind of tells the application where the root for those are. And what I'm gonna do is create a new directory here. I'm gonna call this layout and I'll create one for pages so I can kind of separate this stuff. So one will be our layout, our main layout, the kind of the wrapper for our application where pages will be each individual page. So in here, we're gonna create a new file. I'm going to call this main.jte. And in here, we are going to paste some code. And I'll go ahead and paste that in. And this is just some, uh, some Tailwind code that I pasted in. Uh, this just gives me a nice layout for my application. I'm using the script tag here to include all of Tailwind. Uh, this is something I've talked about in previous videos. You don't want to do this for production, but for a quick MVP, this is the best way to do it because you don't have to set up any other kind of build process. Uh, but what this does is bring in all of Tailwind, too much stuff to send to production. Okay for us right now to just kind of uh, set up a quick example. But if you were interested in how to set up Tailwind in a Spring project and you, you want to use it, I have some other videos on that and I'll see if I can remember to link that below. All right, and then I just went ahead and dropped a um, mark. Let's go ahead and refactor that. Let's rename that to mark. And this is just the Tailwind logo that it is using here in uh, this layout. So all we have here is some navigation. So we'll have some pages at the top, one for our root, which is our like dashboard, a page for team, and a page for projects. Down here is the main area. This is where the main content goes, and it will be different for every page that we visit. So as I mentioned before from the documentation, we have this special object that we can pull in. We have a param here set up for content, and we display that down here. We're using that. I've linked to that if you want to go ahead and read through that documentation again. But this is where our content will go. This is what will replace here with every single kind of page, if you will. 
So let's start to build that out. Let's go over to our main uh, package here, which is templates. We're going to create a new Java class, and I'm going to call this my template controller. So this is going to be a controller, and then we're just going to define uh, each individual uh, route, if you will. So we'll have the root route, um, so that'll just go here, and we'll call this home. This is public string home. This is going to take in a model. Yes, model. And what we are going to do here is return pages slash home. So we'll build that in a second. I want to just add a quick attribute that we can pass down into that. So we'll say model.add attribute. And we will call this username. And we'll just say that this username is John Doe. OK, so now we can go ahead and start to build out a page. So that page is going to be home. So in the pages directory, I'm going to create a new one here called home.jte. And this is where the content for just the home page is going to live. All right, so first we're going to declare that parameter. So at param, param. Param Dan, and that is for username, so username. And now what we want to do is we want to just define the content for this page, but we want to say that we're using a template. So we're going to say at template, right? Uh, why does that not autocomplete? I got to go down. And now you can see we start to get some uh, IntelliSense here. So we want to say layout, and then we want to say main. So you can see now the content is saying, what do you want to replace that content with? And the way that we do that here is by using that at symbol with the back tick, and then the back tick, um, and that will be the end of it, right? So let's go ahead and put that down here. And now what we can do is go ahead and uh, write some HTML. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this in right here just so we don't have to watch me type. But as you can see, this is just a div. Uh, it has a little bit of a shadow around it. Uh, it has a BG of white, which the main layout has a BG of like some kind of gray, I believe. And we're saying welcome. And then we're using that username that is getting passed down through the model. And we're saying this is your dashboard. Here you can view recent activity and manage your account. So if everything works, we should be able to run this application, go to localhost 8080, and see that main layout with our home page, because again, our home page is that default route, uh, which uses home, which uses the main layout. So we should have a little bit of a structure to our application now. So let's see, starts up okay. Let's go to 8080. And there is our page. So now we're on the dashboard. Now if we click team, we click projects, none of those are gonna work yet, but let's make that work. So. We're going to go back over to our um, controller here, and let's add something for team. So let's create a git mapping. We'll say slash team. We will say that this is going to be called team. We also need the model. Model. And what are we going to do here? We're going to return uh, pages slash team, right? Now let's add some information to this. Uh, let's go ahead and add a list of team members. So I'm going to say list.of, uh, let's say Alice, whoops, Alice, Bob, Charlie, and David, right? So now we have a list of team members. Uh, actually, let's not call that that. Let's call this team, right? And so now that we have team members, we can go ahead, yeah, I'm going to call that team members, team members. Now we can go ahead and add that to the model. So I'll say model.add attribute. We'll say team members, and then we'll call, we'll pass in the team members list. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and create that page. So I'll come in here, create a new file. We'll call this team.jte. And we need to add some content to this. So let's go back to um, here. I'm not going to make you watch me type this out. But again, this is another page. We have a parameter for a list of strings, so our team members. Uh, again, we are using that layout main. Here is the content that we are going to display in that content block. 
Uh, we have this title, it says our team, and then we're using that for loop to iterate over each team member. So each team member is a string, we're string, string member uh, in team members, and then for each member, we're just gonna display the member's name. So now I am going to have to restart this because I made some changes to my controller, but I should be able to go back over pretty quickly. There's my dashboard, and now there's our team. So. Let's uh, kind of close this out, do one more. We can say at git mapping slash projects, public string projects, and this is going to take in the model. And let's just paste this in. We're gonna add some projects, same way we did before. We, now we have a username and we have projects so that we can display um, a couple different things there. And if we go into our pages, we'll just create one more uh, projects.jte and we'll paste this in. So now we are using that username and a list of strings for projects. Again, we're just iterating over that list and displaying that out. So now I can go ahead and rerun this. And if I go to projects, we now see our projects. So now we have project, teams, and dashboard. So again, this is a good way to use a layout. Uh, we're using this main layout, and then we're defining the content for each of these different sections in a page uh, by using the pages and then using that layout. So we're not having to like redefine the layout over and over again. And again, we could have multiple layouts here. If we had different kind of layouts for different sections of our application, uh, we can define pages, subdirectories in there if we wanted to. Uh, we can continue to do that. Now that's one way of doing it. Um, another way that you could do this um, in main, if we wanted to just like include something else, we could. If we wanted to come in here and uh, say uh, at template, so we can come in here and say template, uh, maybe uh, we wanted to just include the pages and we wanted to include home, username, uh, we can actually include that because that is, oh, that is not getting passed in here. Let's just say Dan Vega for this one. Uh, this is another syntax that you can use. Uh, to kind of include a template in another one. So let's say that um, in this main, we wanted to kind of define, say, a footer somewhere else, uh, but not in this particular layout. We could create um, maybe like partials. Uh, they're, they're known as like partials or fragments uh, from Timely. If we can create like a directory that includes those types of things, and we can include them this way as well. So I think that's it. Um, that was one of the questions I got uh, the most, I think, about JT is like, well, hey, I'm coming from Timely. How do I use templates in here? Uh, that is what I covered today. There's a lot more questions people have, and I want to try to get to as many of them as we can. The next video will kind of cover how to use this with HTMX. Um, that's really cool. Uh, we have a, a pretty cool video planned on that. But if you have more questions on JTE and how to use it in your Spring applications, please feel free to drop those comments below. I read all the comments. I'm sorry if I can't get to every single one. Um, that is the price when your channel grows a little bit larger. It's hard to keep up with comments, but I'm doing my best. So thank you for uh, your patience with me on that. But friends, you know what time it is. If you found value in this, do me a huge, huge favor. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding.